All right, guys, another little project we're going to get done today. We're going to finally get this pond aerating fountain installed into the pond. It was quite simple out of the box. We installed these bolts right down here. One, two, three, four. Actually, I take that back. That was actually already installed. We put this grate on with three screws. One, two, three. That keeps a lot of junk out of the fountain. We're adding this rope. Poly rope is the best rope. It won't rot. It floats. Obviously, this ain't going to float because we're going to be dropping it down into the water with a uh, cement block on both sides. So, this is going to be kind of broken up into sections. This video, I will say this. Uh, I've never done this before, so I've been trying to find a video of somebody installing this into the pond. Now, I know it doesn't sound that complicated, right? Drop it into where you want it. Take a uh, anchor or a cement block, which I'm going to use the cement block. And because I got some laying around and a 25 to 30 pound anchor is like 70 bucks a piece. I'm going to need two of them. So $140 just to sit there and doesn't make a lot of financial sense when I have some blocks left over from the previous owners of this house that I can use. My only concern is they say to use a 3 8 inch uh, poly, poly, polypyrethane rope, which is won't rot and the sun won't hurt it and all that good stuff. Um, but the problem is it's a little bit thicker of a rope, um, but you also need it for the strength. Um, so I knotted it up the best I could. Two double knots and then another knot right here. So if it tried to come loose, hopefully this will stop it. I'm hoping with it just sitting there, it's not going to undo itself. Because it's such a thick rope, it's hard to get that really tight knot. I'm going to try to take a tool and tighten it as much as I can. i got to cut it. They say to do 25 foot. So there's 25 foot on each side. And you're going to want to do it like 45 degree angle from each other. It's going to be kind of an experiment, guys. My question is, there's the boat. I'm going to take it out there. I'm going to measure the water. They say 25 feet. Hopefully that'll work. My pond, I believe, is only 20 foot deep. So hopefully it'll be fine unless the guy is wrong and it's even deeper. Um, where I'm going to try to put it is going to be the deepest, not because that's where it needs to be. It can actually go in as shallow as 3 or 4 foot deep. But where I want to get the view from inside is exactly going to be right near the middle of the pond. So I'm going to load that thing up into the boat. Um, and I'm going to take a measuring tape and figure out where I'm going to drop it. Uh, first, I got to get the boat, the motor, the battery all hooked up. Um, I need to tie off one more 25 foot rope, tie it off on the other side. And it's, we're going to kind of wing this, guys. I also got to hope I'm guessing that the 70 foot long uh, plug in cord is actually going to be long enough. So I meant to do a longer one. I ordered the wrong size, I think, but I think it still might work. So, all right, this is gonna be kind of a crapshoot. I cannot find a video of somebody else actually dropping this in the water, putting the rope together, any kind of tips or tricks. All I ever find is people just showing off the fountain. So um, it ain't gonna be the most detailed video, but essentially just know this is a Scott's aerating fountain. Um, literally it comes in that huge box over there. Uh, you literally just put the, uh, you just put this motor, which is already mounted inside the fountain itself. It already comes mounted to the casing right here. It already comes with the hooks. All you had to do is put in three screws to put the grid on. And then you just had to mount the plastic, this big square flotation part. Um, it's obviously upside down right now because i got to hook these uh, poly up. But essentially you just connect this piece to the base with like two screws. Uh, two or four screws, I can't quite remember. I mean, it's that simple. Then you just 25 foot uh, on each side rope. 
connect a, uh, there's, it's usually rated for uh, what size weight you need for the half horsepower that I have. They're saying a 25 pound weight. So I'm going to grab a cinder block, which is probably around 25 pounds, and I'm going to wrap that baby up as best I can around it. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, take it out to the pond and give it a go. I'm going to pause this video until I'm ready to show more. Okay, guys, I cut my first rope. Remember when they say to make it 25 foot, you want to toss it 25 feet. Give yourself extra rope because you got to have enough rope to wrap it around the concrete block several times if that's what you're using. So my 25 foot goes right here. I guesstimated how much I'm going to need, probably another 10, 12 foot. Because I'm going to wrap that concrete block several times over and then have enough to get a good tie down on it. So don't cut yourself short. Then at the end here, I'm going to take a lighter. Let me see if I can set the phone down. Take a lighter. You want to kind of burn these ends so they don't fray. So kind of melt them down into a tight end. See, they're going to melt down. I don't know. This stuff here is more of a cloth, so it probably won't melt. But I'm going to heat it up. Yeah, I'll maybe even set the thing on fire a little bit. Let it burn down, melt down. Don't touch it. It would be obviously hot, but you know, sometimes when we're working on stuff, we do dumb things. One time I touched the side of a burn barrel thinking, I wonder if it's hot near the bottom because it didn't seem like it was getting very warm and fucking burned the heck out of my hand. So that was kind of stupid on my part, but you live and you learn, so it's good now. It's obviously... But see all that did? See how it kind of took the phrase down a little bit? So see that? So you're going to want to do that. I'm even going to do it one more time just to be dang sure. It's all melted real good because you're going to want a nice tight end there or it'll start fraying. So I'm going to say that's pretty good. I'm going to tie uh, this section off and I got to burn a couple more ends and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I got my blocks. I believe online they said 16 blocks are about the weight I need these ones have obviously been used and filled with concrete so I busted the concrete out of the middle so they're equal and now I'm going to tie them off and next time you see me we'll be on the boat